So my next poem is something called Dear Daddy. So if anyone here is brought up, wait one second. Is anyone here brought up by single mothers? Raise your hand, be proud, guys. Come on, be proud. So obviously I'm one of them. So this one is um half a truth. No, actually it's all true story. All my poems are pretty much true story. So this poem, I don't need telling guys. So this poem is called Dear Daddy. I actually did attend a, a summer workshop where they told me I have to write. It was an evangelization thing. Because even if I'm not the most religious person, I do believe in like, you know, um, finding yourself and finding a higher power. So I went, I went. And then they told me, oh, the reason why you're in Kobe is because you don't have a father. So I left, no, and then we left. So anyway, so this poem's about that. It's called Dear Dad. Dear Dad, Sister Marissa from the Evangelization Summer Workshop I'm attending tells me I have to write this letter. She says the reason why my life is incomplete is because you are not in it. When I was first grade, my teacher tells me that the family consists of a mother, a father, and siblings. I only have one third of the set. They tell us, oh, you have to make these family trees using this formula. So we go out to the outside of our classroom and pick up these fallen twigs. I pick up too many branches, I only have to use one. Dear Dad, maybe I should start by describing myself. I'm short, I have terrible eyes, I have wide lips, and I love reading books, so basically like mom. Sometimes, especially when I was younger, I look in the mirror and try to delete parts of me to see what parts came from you. My mom says that I am brave like you, that I am stubborn like you, what is braver than a woman walking around with the world growing inside her, knowing what the world outside is? What is more stubborn than her every step? Dear Dad, Sister Marissa is probably the only one who's ever going to read these notes, but I pride myself in my handwriting so far. I'm being civil. Sometimes I wonder how I would have turned out if you brought me up instead of her. If you would have taught me how to write or left me to learn on my own. My mother, my mother, the English teacher, did not teach me how to read. She taught me how to love stories. So much so that I long to devour every page by myself. And then later, press pencil to paper, sketching uneven lines, pouring words out, wanting to be tasted. Dear Dad. My friends say the best part of dads is when a boy breaks your heart and daddy's there to take away the pain and tear their throats out. They say the best part of, the, of having a dad is when he, when you're seven years old and he lifts you above his head and spins you around. They say the best part of having a dad is when he cries at your 18th and then again at your wedding. My mother never protects me from pain. She knows I can have. She taught me how to embrace it, wrap my arms around the soreness of my chest and there is no pain worth stopping your breath. And also, of course, she disapproved of carrying up throats. It ruined manicures. My mother, ever since I was born, lifted me above her head just to be sure that my reach was farther than hers. And you should have seen my mother's smug grin at my 18th birthday. I expect to also see it at my birthday. Dear Daddy, I am indeed in complete but for a million reasons that have nothing to do with your daddy. Nuns can sometimes be such narrow-minded jerks. I apologize for any offense you may have taken to this. I do not know you, I have never met you. In fact, I'm not even angry. You are merely the moon to me, lit, lit by whatever light the sun can spare. My mother, the sun, not the biggest or brightest of stars in the universe, but the closest. The one that I ever all the only one that I ever needed. Dear Mommy, I am really sorry for the call you will be getting from Sister Marissa. I can't help you. And what do you expect? I'm my mother's daughter. <laughs>